It is Wednesday, 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 OSD, Obsessive Sneaker Disorder. Thanks for tuning in. This is episode 341. It is the best damn day of the week. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Dean Wells, along with the Soul Doctors and Disorderlies from around the world. Yes, man, it is officially March 25th, 2015. This is Obsessive Sneaker Disorder. We got the best damn show on the internet. Coming to you live and direct. Hope you're ready to walk with us, talk with us, and more importantly, rock with us as the Soul Doctors and the Sorleys. Yes, we're about to, you know, talk about the sneakers, all the culture, and then some. People, the people want to know. We want to know. Hopefully, this week has been a great week for you as we're walking upon or stepping towards to Air Max Day. But in Word. between time, we're we're going to talk about some some great sneakers that we have on our mind and let's get right to it the soul doctors soul doctors are in the building let's go straight to houston 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 mr kudomo what's the good word man what's up d what's up paper what's up all the soul doctors obsessive sneaker disorderlies around the world what up brother you know what it's about right now man it's about that nba playoff basketball march madness basketball seasons in full effect this is what made a lot of the great sneakers we continue to know and love today, what uh, certain people did in these sneakers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you got to watch the kickstory being made before your very eyes right now. Absolutely. So that's great. what I'm tuned into, man. It looks like we're getting some bonus uh, playoff basketball already. Things are tight in the West and the East. I, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> you know, we got, right. some, we got some big news. Kevin Durant may be out for the season. Yeah, That's man. Some big sneaker news I'm right there. You. Jeez. So. It, it definitely is in terms of sales. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, let's go from Houston straight to the P, to the D, to the X. Jesse is in the building. What's up, sir? What's, the good What's going on, Disorderlies? All my sneaker lovers out there. Hope everyone's doing well. Had a good week. It is Wednesday night, the best night of the week. The crew is locked in and ready to go and ready to share some business with you around the sneaker world. So I uh, hope everyone's doing good. Absolutely. And go doing straight well. Excuse my English. Doing well. Doing well. <laughs> from the PDX to Mr. 305 himself, the size 15 king. Yes, we see you. You know, we see you up in the building. We see you walking in. What's up, Mr. Quab? What's the good word? He's running to the you. computer right now. What's the good word? You good? I think he muted himself because you know he's in King of Diamonds. You know. Okay, you get that that background music. So, paper chaser, man. <laughs> yes, sir. What's the good word? What's the good word, Doctor? Doctor. Well, I gotta thank everybody first off for watching my. Uh, 100 years of sneakers in three minutes piece that I did with Slate.com. Thank you to everyone. Humble thank you for that. It is currently at about 18,000 views in those few days. So mm. thank you very much for that. Um, thanks to Bob, cool Bob Love, Bobito Garcia for referring Slate to me for that. Shout out to Calvin from Jordan Heads. Um, shout out to Nick Santoro from Classic Kicks. Shout out to Anna Marie, Anne Marie, who um, shot the piece. It was a lot of fun doing it. It was real quick and easy, and you know it's fun. People are loving it. So <coughs> looking forward to doing that again in some way, shape, or form or capacity. But the feedback has been good, and I got to thank everybody for that. So uh, on top of that, you can expect to see. Another episode of From the Feet Up coming to you very soon. Episode number four coming to you very soon. So, okay. um, just staying busy, you know, extending the brand, you know, hitting us, you know, getting the OSD gospel out there in different ways, shapes, and forms and platforms. So, I'm staying busy, you know. So that's the only way to be, man. As as we know, you I know, I'm dead. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and you know, of course, I too am looking forward to breaking out, you know, my Air Max 1s for Air Max Day tomorrow. So, 
Yeah. Hey, don't forget it's also Yeezy Boost Day tomorrow. It's oh, Yeezy Boost in, Day <laughs> in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's an actual release yes, it in Europe. is. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that tonight. Oh man. We we definitely gonna talk a little bit about that tonight because uh we we've we've discovered something, if you will. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I I want to be able to pull that up and um pull that up in a second and see. You gonna share can. that one right off the top, right off the rip, or you want to go to stocks? You want to talk nah, money? let's come back to that one. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Okay, but, let's come back to that one. Let me pull up the stocks then. Fine, fine, fine. Where were we at here? Hold on a minute. New so computer thing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta talk about let, let's let's talk about this. So it's Air Max Day tomorrow. So uh, you know, around the world on on you know March twenty sixth, a lot of people are gonna be sporting their Air Max. Sneakers, you know, all over the internet, all over social media, you know, um, the Air Max Zero that Tinker had designed or sketched, I should say, sketched uh -huh. some 30 years ago, uh -huh. now hit the market. They went on sale this past weekend. Um, word, at least from what I saw from social media, they sold out in a matter of of probably less than an hour. And they had a full size run on Nike.com and a couple other places. You know, from size seven all the way up to size fifteen, and all of a sudden they were gone, and people were like, "What just happened?" So, were any of you, any of you, the doctors, did you buy the Air Max Zero? Did you get your hands on them? Were you able to get your order through? I would have liked to see the Air Max Zero in its traditional materials. Mm. You know, they made the Air Max Zero and some of these newfangled. Okay. Materials, which I don't know. I mean, it's cool what they're doing. It kind of blend, blends the past with the present, but mm. I, I would have really liked to see that OG design come to fruition and how shoes were kind of made back then. Didn't they have success with the uh, flow like that? Like they released the uh, flow and a kind of newfangled. Uh, Absolutely. Thing and then the OG came out and had a lot of success. Yeah. I just, yeah. you know, it, it kind of had that hyper fused mesh on the upper and I don't know. Shoes just weren't made like that back then. I would have really liked to see the true predecessor of what Tinker imagined. Mm. But uh, it was good. It was good to see a design come out the vault, and I really hope. Someday um, we can see a lot more of those designs. Not all of them made into sneakers, but I would love to look at a lot of those things that get thrown away or are just too revolutionary to be produced. Hmm. Well, yeah. It looks a lot like what they've been doing lately with SB. Explain that a little bit. Well, you know, they've been doing a lot of Air Max looking shoes in the SB line now. Mm -hmm. And so that shoe looks like a shoe. That, yeah, that shoe looks like it could easily be an SB shoe. So I'll pass on the Air Max Zero. It will get zero of my dollars. You think mm -hmm. the Air Max Zero can, it looks like a, a skate shoe? It looks like the what SB has been doing lately with trying to mix Air Max with SB. Well, I know you don't like mashups, so I'll give you that. But I don't know if you can skate in the one that's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is if you look at the SB stuff that's been coming out, especially the tooling on the bottom, they're doing Air Max on the bottom. No, and I agree with you 100%. Um, the running category for them is struggling. And so they want some of that skate energy. And so that's why you see skate shoes with Air Maxes on the bottom. Um so I don't necessarily see this shoe as a reverse of that, but I understand where you're coming from. This shoe looks like it could have easily been an Air Max sketch to me. Mm. I mean, uh, 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 I mean, easily been an SB sketch to me. What about that shoe says SB? I'm telling you, if you look at what has been sitting on the shelves for SB right now, you're going to see it. 
think he's t- talking about the Costin Max, the Janowski Max. It looks yes. like that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The Air Max Zero looks like it can come from know. the same family. And I, I see what you're, I see what you're talking about because it's uh, it's uh, more or less the the mesh or the hyperfused materials on a Air Max free sole. So well, we, the, the the actual Air Max One sole has not been bastardized to the skate team yet. It's close. Free, so the, it's close. The, the, it's the, close. The, the, the Janowski the Freeze do no, have a, that's a free. I'll pull it up right now. That's the free. The Air Max One right of the Air Max has One. Not nope. been it is. It's the costin. It's the costin Two Max. Yeah. Hmm. Looks really right similar. Now, share it. Too many. There too, it is too right many here. similarities. In it right now. I'm not saying I don't like it. I just popped in just now. But it's got. Everyone. It's got the. Yeah. There See? it is right there. That's it. The, 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 the S- Air Max Zero could easily be an SB. Hands down, that's it. Yeah. That's a. Mm-hmm. That's right. a. That's a Costin Max Two. That could easily be the Air Max Zero. It's I, still as a matter of fact, when I saw the Zero, I thought it was a Costin Three. No lie. I saw the picture. <laughs> someone, someone posted it up. I was like, "Oh, Costin Max Three. Those are kind of nice." Sight. Mm. I give the Air Max One, the Zero, a little bit of credit because it's the actual, it's the original sole. This isn't the original sole. It's got hints from it, but this isn't the original sole. As long as you're keeping the original sole, then go ahead and bastardize it a little bit. But this, this is taking inspiration from it. This is not, this is not, that is not the Air Max One sole. The you Zero's the not Max the one, one. so The Zero's not the full one sole though. The Zero's got a free, got a free toe on. It. I don't think so. Yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the. Uh, it's the Air Max 90 current, so it's the same thing that they're using. Uh, is it? Yeah, look. That look at what they did. The grooves on the front of that. They may they may have molded it like that, but that's not the that's not the Air Max one sole. Not the full well, thing. What sole did you say that is? It looks very similar to the uh, like the one that they had on the Air Max 90 current. Although the 90 current used the 90, mm. it's where they where they made them. They they sort of merged the free technology with. The actual old soul, but they just used a mold of it. Oh, yeah. you know what that is? You know they what that is? Very similar. I take, I take this back. You know what that is? That's not even the. Uh, that's not even the original soul. That's the one they got on these goddamn Morays that are out right now. Yep. Those Air Max Morays. So they're yep. trying to combine the two, but they realize there some of us that weren't buying it because it didn't look like the original soul. So they tried to. Right. They, this is not the original soul. Okay, I take that back. It's I very similar back. to what they did with the. Uh, with the MX1 um, Lunar, where they yeah. molded it to look yeah. like, but it's not the same material. It's close, but it's, it's yeah. not. It's not. You got that. Yep. I don't know if I'm a... And maybe you guys can help me, because you guys are more into running than I am. And I do run, like, I get on a treadmill, like, almost every day, but I'm not a, a running athlete. But what do you think about what I call this fake paneling. I mean, the shoe is basically a one-piece mesh upper with something kind of sprayed on it to create fake paneling. Mm. And oh, the, oh, the zero? Yeah, I'm not I'm not opposed to a lot of that stuff because, look, technology has to keep moving because if, we're, if we don't allow it to progress, then we sound a lot like Jordan heads who are like, oh, that's not real leather and that's not this and that. Like, I'm, I'm okay with a lot of the with a lot of the current technology, it, as long that, as it still works. Is that functional, or is that for aesthetic purposes? Uh, it depends on the shoe. There's some where that fuse and and a lot of that, like they have, they have uh, the fly not flying it, but fly wire on uh, a lot of running spikes now, and they would not put fly wire on a spike if it didn't work and support, because that's pure performance. At the world class level, and then some of that stuff worked. Uh, we we you know it started out kind of gimmicky, and I think they tuned it up right to have a lot of it actually work. It depends on what the what the final actual use of this shoe is, and and that's something that D and I have chatted about recently with some projects I want to get started. There's there's running lifestyle inspired, and then there's actually mm. a sort of lifestyle where this <laughs> stuff is functional and fashionable. And then you got the 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 sort of I don't want to u- want to use the word knockoff, but there's a tear down of this looks like 
what the running shoe looks like. In in the in the sports world, we call that a replica. You got a real shoe, <laughs> and then you got an authentic, and then you got the yeah, replica. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying. So some some not, of that uh, stuff is replica. Yeah. yeah, this shoe is not functional. You're not going to catch anybody of. Uh, of of Steve's caliber, or you're not gonna catch me going out and actually running in uh, an Air Max One. No, mm. no, no, how? It's just it will not work right now. So we'll see. That that's answers your functional question. The materials on the top, that paint that looks like, that's mm-hmm. just gotta add some integrity to that meshy material. And if you can get a little bit of integrity, if it comes from paint or whatever, to give you a little more. Uh, support on the upper, just comfort wise, yeah. it's going to make a difference when you put the shoe on, whether it's well, functional here, or not. Let me, let me, let me grab. But you're right, it is paint, but it, it 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 helps a little bit. Hold on, I'm gonna grab some for you. Okay, so this is what I, I I have to say, even though it's supposed to be a running sneaker, and I look at these pictures more and more, and shout out to K Nabs for for that comparison. This so sneaker just speaks oh. and says lifestyle to me. It does not say running. No, no, no it's not it's running. Not that's like running sneaker what? Twenty. No, that's lifestyle. But but what I will say is if you look at that side panel, especially the side panel on the forefoot, mm-hmm. right there near the ball of the foot, a lot of this technology they're using actually is translating up to what they would call their performance model. Mm. These, tape, these taped overlays, as Jesse said, actually do bind the material and provide support, but underneath there, there's some boning. In, in fashion, they would call it boning, okay. where there's some supportive plastic support. that has been molded to, and you can kind of see that where, the, where the, the, the sort of sprayed on, almost plastic bag looking thing gets whiter near the actual uh, bend of the foot. Right. There may be some actual support in there. So, mm. and, and and I, I bring up a model like this to show <laughs> the best model in the world. Sorry, you know, but it's it's fashion. These are those overlays versions. This isn't the original. These this is where they did the the, the paneling, the no so. Oh, that, okay. That used to be just fashion, found its way into function, depending mm. on some factors involved. Like there's no boning in this one. But there is some, some additional one. support fused in to make the material hard. I'm glad you just used that word fused because that's all all of this is, is hyper <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it is. That's all of it. That's Isn't it knit it is. with a paint overlay? It looks like it's some kind of knit with a no, paint that's, overlay. No, that right there is that's, that's fused to the material. I don't know exactly how they do it, but they basically <laughs> melt that plastic into the mesh, making the mesh and the plastic form this new bond. It's, yeah. it's, where, where, where the overlay happens, it's actually a new material in there. Mm-hmm. You said it right. They've mastered the hyperfuse process because three years ago, it was shit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now they've mastered the hyperfuse process. That's all All of this is, is hyperfuse. Yep. All of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They just found a way to make some of it actually work. I mean, yep. they definitely pushed this to the lifestyle and D, as you were saying. This looks nothing like there's 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 nothing on here that can even remotely come across as functional. And now that you put it that way, and I look at it, it's it's kind of sad because again, I feel like they're losing in that category. But this is, you know, yeah, they're is, not they're not marketing the shoe as a functional running shoe. They're not. Yeah, you're right. They're is, not. Yeah, they're handing it to people. Say look fresh. So it works. Yeah. 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 You're right. SFK, is this a type of sneaker that you would buy and wear? No, I actually passed up on this shoe several times. Okay. Um, one is I'm not really wearing anything white right now for whatever reason. Mm. And two, um, it, it just it, it's just not something that I'm into. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess I'm in my older age. I'm more <laughs> of a simplistic shoe buyer. I don't buy anything too complicated anymore. I'm not involved in the hype. I mean, this shoe, even. Even comparing to last year's Air Max Day, it's more of a scheme now. It's another exploitive day that they can use to bump up their their profits. So putting Tinker's name behind it and coming out with a very lackluster shoe, in my opinion, is is just it's all hype. It, okay. It's all right too. I've I've seen plenty of people say I need to see it in another colorway because I mean mm. this yeah. one. 
this one doesn't do it for people. So, yeah. I mean, I guess depending on the success of the worldwide release tomorrow, we may see other colors in this. No, you're going to see other colors. And It'll be interesting to see if we see other colors, but I would I would love to see the numbers of the sell through on this shoe and the sell through the, on the two replicas that are coming out the same day that D talked about the blue and the red. What's the price well, point? These were what one fifty, I think it was. Oh, right. that's where they lose you. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> Hell I, would, no. I, would, I, would, I would rock it. I'm not even gonna front. I love running shoes. I love even lifestyle running shoes. I would pair this up with a nice pair of jeans and a blazer, maybe a bow tie to kind of make the make the sort of juxtaposition of sport and lifestyle. I would rock it, but not for one fifty. No. Not for one fifty. No, this is an outlet shoe to me. This is this is a hash wall time. <laughs> on twenty percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hash wall on twenty percent running around in Portland with Jesse. Shoot, even and, even at a hundred hundred and hundred fifty, man, you crazy? A hundred dollars you might have me a hard time getting that. And I'll go out on a limb here. You may not find this particular colorway in an outlet because people are gonna get caught onto the hype machine, but I think you'll find a lot of the colorways that are going to follow this. Agreed. At the mm, okay. I mean, we're going to see these at the resellers in eBay sooner than uh, well, outlets. You, but, They're already but, on eBay. But like, they, like, average resale price on this shoe is about 210 <laughs> to 225 Wow. <laughs> these people are crazy. These people are cool. This shoe is going to be zero for one reason and one reason only. Because they put no thought into serving this up for Air Max Day. <laughs> oh my God, this is that's foolishness. And like I said, okay, so, you know, look, they 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 they're marketing it not as a running shoe. If they never mind, that'll be giving one away. That'll yeah, be giving don't one even away. talk about. Don't even don't give it. none away. Nope. <laughs> I, mean, I, can, I, can I caught honestly, myself. I can honestly see the the dismay in everybody's tone, but I mean, looking at the way the marketplace is now, you shouldn't be surprised. I mean, no, it's totally not surprised. surprised. No, no, I don't surprised. think surprised. No, no, no. no. surprised. You know, you know what it is to me is is the kind of thing that we always talk about is look, sell your shoes. Make even if you want to make lackluster product, that's great. Just market it in the right way. They could actually add a red. Like I said, that'd be give, it's close to giving one away, but the, if they put this in the vertical of running lifestyle, kind of like they do with slides in Jordan land, like these are your mm -hmm. off-the-track, off-the-course shoes. You want to still have your runner style, but in a lifestyle way, you'd be, you'd be better served to drop the price point and sell this a, a million of these to runners who don't want to wear their running shoes, their cruddy, muddy, sweaty gym shoes, but they want to keep a running profile. I'd buy that at 100 bucks, not 150 in a hype category. Oh, man, look at that picture. Who, where did you get that from? This is a shout-out to, to K Nabs. He sent this, you know, he tweeted this picture, put up a <laughs> comparison. I mean, you look at them side-by-side side now. Yep. Good. You know? Yep. Way to go, Nabs. Shout out. What up, Nabs? And you, look at look at how it wraps good. around. They yep. basically moved the cost in, into the in, into the lifestyle category. That's, that's the Janowski right there. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> a Janowski. Yeah. But all you that's need is some angles oh, paint, and you're good to go. Yep, that's a Janowski yeah, now. That's, yep. Janowski. Oh, that's the because, other shoe I was talking about. Yeah, because the cost in looks just like that. <laughs> that's what I'm <laughs> Look up the look up the cost in too. That's what I'm saying. This could have easily been a, S, a SB shoe, the way SB's going. <laughs> you get you some angleless paint and some painter's tape, and you're good to go. You're good, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yo, the costume 2 is just... Hold on. Keep that up. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the costume 2 since we had some fun with this. Oh, my God. <laughs> Screen share. New shoes, yeah. new shoes. Bang, there we go. Cost in two. <laughs> All right, screen share that, D. Wow. So we have three sneakers that, I mean... That could be in the same family. Yeah, yeah. you can definitely see at, the influence even, even from the, each of them. Yeah, even the dimples the and the whole... The and the Janikowski are the same shoe but a different upper. Exact same mold. Exactly. 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 But we've, we've talked about it before. That's the cost effectiveness that Nike inputs in most of mm -hmm. their designs. Right, so right. You're, ab most, you're absolutely right, SFK. So you're, most of the, the price increases are, are cost associated with 
shoes beyond research and development is actually creating the mold for each size of the shoe. Mm-hmm. So they can create a new shoe with the same uh, outsole and just create a new upper, it's going to be more cost effective for them and still charge the, the, the same mm-hmm. wholesale price or the same retail price. More yeah. money, more money, more money. I'm, I'm buying this. Minute. Look at the price point on this, though. I'm buying this before I buy Ooh, an AirPack Zero. Go, what is go, the Jesse. price point on the one fifteen? Cost is one fifteen. <laughs> that means this kind and of most is on, and, and, most, and mostly on sale if you find it in the right spot. Well, it's only gonna <laughs> be in a skate shop. You're not gonna find it in in Foot Locker and they, stuff. No, they, they got these at Champs. No, they do. They're they're actually in, yeah, all the SB stuff is actually in Foot Action. Uh, yeah, Foot Action and Champs on sale, bruh. Both yeah. the Costin yeah. and uh, the Janowski are in the outlets. The yeah. Co- yeah, the yeah the Costin. I found the Costin at our uh, champs here at the West Roads Mall here in in uh, Omaha. They had the the at least the Costin from last year. I don't know if they have this one yet. Oh, it'll get there. Don't worry. Oh yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the Air Max Zero or the Air Max SB. <laughs> or the Janowski. <laughs> or the Costin. Yeah, the, Air Max, the Air Max 90 current Costin SB. <laughs> That's it. That's the one. <laughs> there you go. All right. So a bloody day in stocks, gentlemen and ladies mm. and disorderlies around the world. Wow. A bloody day. A Jack the Ripper sort of day. Mm. Nike finished at, even though it's still high, $98.99 per share. Down 166 on the day. Skechers, SFK's favorite company. (laughs) Sorry, just kidding. Finished at $70.49 per share, down $2.20 per share on the day. VF Corporation finished at $74.07 per share, down $132 per share on the day. Under Armour finished at $79.45. Down 205 on the day. Deckers Outdoor Corporation, you know, Uggs, Teva, you know, a couple of other brands underneath the Deckers Outdoor Corporation banner, but most famously Uggs. They finished at $72.60 per share today, down 88 cents. Foot Locker Incorporated finished at $62.11 per share, down 56 cents per. Adidas AG on the OTC market finished at $38.69 per share, down $0.25 cents per. Puma on the ETR market finished at $177.90 in euros. The only stock up today, $250. eBay finished on the NASDAQ at $58.06, down $145. And last but not least, rounding out the list, Finish Line Incorporated finished at $23.43 per share, down $0.82 cents per share. So if you're keeping score, that is nine out of the ten stocks that we watch in the red today. Hmm. Is there a hmm. way to pull a monthly projection to get a, to get a slightly higher bird's eye view? Because uh, I'd be interested to see, because we, we track them week to week, Week, I'd be interested to see what the monthly red or green were. Yeah, there is. I'll share with you after the show. Cool. There's a way to do that. So, a very bloody day. Um, one of the articles that is up on the side on the top right next to the graph um, that we illustrate when we show it each week is from The Motley Fool, and it says, Five Things Nike Incorporated Management Wants You to Know. I think everyone should read that. It's an interesting read. Um, it's on the Motley. The other article that I think everyone should read is Article C on that same side where it says, Why Nike Incorporated and Under Armour Incorporated will keep winning. <laughs> that one's from March 23rd. Wow. <laughs> Five winning. Um, winning. So winning. Those are the articles that um, people should read. Once again, when this, um, you know, when you see this, it's definitely something to look into. Um, a bloody day. That's why that's the bloodiest we've seen in a, in about a month or so. Because we did have a a, a, yeah. a shoe day a month or so ago where every stock except for one was down. Man, I'd like to know what's going on. Like again, it's just how how my brain works. Pair that up against 
pop culture, pair that up against technology, pair that up against sports to see what's happening that could be affecting all of those. A lot of times stocks go down when people, not so much that those stocks did badly or poorly, mm -hmm. but they've turned their focus to another thing. If there's a military advance, if there's a, a you know, a sort of Walmart, Target, uh, Kmart, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That All of that affects it where all of a sudden the frivolous things or the so-called frivolous things become less important and fuel costs, uh, material costs, things like, you know, hard goods, uh, metals, uh, futures, um, livestock. When those things shift, a lot of times the good side shifts down. Hmm. One of the things I, I noticed right now is last week once, the, uh, you know, Nike had their call to, you know, Wall Street and their quarter, you know, Q3 was up, their stock was going through the roof. We had reported on episode 340 that Adidas basically said they're not going to enter the, um, you know, the the NBA sponsorship, you know, apparel war. And then lo and behold, right, you know, thereafter, Nike announced their, you know, Q3 numbers up big, big time. Their stock jumped up. They had a huge increase last um, last Thursday. And then lo and behold, now we see articles like this of Nike and Under Armour duking it out, you know. Mm -hmm. Under Armour being very aggressive, um, you know whether or not they actually do throw their you know hat in the ring for the NBA sponsorship. That's to be seen. But the big thing right now is Nike realizes that they're going to continue to expand, particularly not in the United States. Their business, their money is coming outside the United States, particularly anywhere but the U.S., but you know specifically in South America. Mm -hmm. That's their big. Yep. Huge market, and we, we, we know this especially, I don't remember exactly what episode, but when Sharice was on the show, she talked about emerging markets, yep. and we talked about, you know, the, um, you know, the, the cricket club in Compton, and yep. how big that is, and we know what's coming up pretty soon <clears throat> for the Olympics in, in Brazil in 2016, Um Again, it's going to be another... And we're in a World Cup cycle now, the World exactly. Cup qualifying cycle, too. Mm -hmm. So, there's all these, all like you said, Steve, all these factors, fuel costs, you know, what the economy's doing, uh, good old uh, job market security. So, yep. Yep. it's going to be interesting to see, like, like you said, what that number is over the course of, say, a month, two months, three months, yeah. for, for these respective stocks. Yeah. And understand Nike's going through their almost getting ready for that last quarter, you know. Yeah. We know what the trends are for that company when they get to the middle of that third quarter, heading into that fourth quarter. You know, they do that last call like they just did, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're going to see jobs pop up. You're going to see tightening of the ship. You're going to see, you know, some things kind of slow down. They're going to ride out the NBA finals. They're going to ride out some other things to try to get well, ready for and, something. And a lot something. of stocks, a lot it's of stocks are stuff. down. Uh, during the end of the fiscal year, because the fiscal year still does exist. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not the calendar year. Uh, it's mm. still that yeah. April fifteenth tax yeah. filing deadline. Mm -hmm. So the end of the fiscal year, a lot of times you'll see people dumping stocks, cashing in. Yeah, we've seen um, that already. Uh -huh. Under Armour cats were cashing it in. Remember? I mean, yep. that's back and that's, three that's weeks a, ago. Yeah, know? that's a very real thing. Here we have the Berkshire Hathaway meeting every year in Omaha because of uh, the oracles still living here. And yeah. uh, you see that a lot, where people people are dumping one thing to get another. It doesn't mean they're not going to diversify later, but they're making moves to shift things around at the end of the fiscal cycle hmm. to match up with the corporate cycle. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a pretty complex game that gets played. Was it Warren Buffett just in the news about something? What was he? What was he talking about? He's, he's, he's in Brazil, and What's he's a that? part of the. He's in Brazil. He's a part of the group that's bringing Heinz and Kraft together. Yep. Bringing Heinz and Kraft together. Wow. Okay. Yep. Three billion. Three billion dollar acquisition. Yo, 
That dude makes moves, man. Like that's our what regular is, new. That's that's our what regular. Is, what news is around. what is Warren Buffett? What what's his value? He has to be like seventy two billion or something, right? And the thing about Warren Buffett is he's with the Brazilian company. Like we're talking about emerging markets. He didn't he didn't he didn't bring that from the U S. He went to Brazil and they were like, yeah, let's roll with you. Like wow, yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> geez. Geez. he's smart, man. He's smart at leading at leading the charge. And the thing is, he's a really simple dude. Like he's. He he'll tell anybody. He's like it's just a matter of like intuition. Like he follows his gut on a lot of things, and he sees where moves are going to be made, and he just happens to get there mm-hmm. before everybody, you know. And and then he's waiting for you when you get there, and he's inviting you on in. <laughs> it's like, oh, you just got here? Yeah, I was early. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Like damn, exactly. but you seem like you've been chilling. Yeah. Huh? First in line, he's like, <laughs> he's like, he's, he's like Dominique, you know, you know like, that's Dominique our back in the day, the line exactly. King. That's our he's news that seriously here, cool dude like, that that's led into the party and, and has his own room before anybody shows up. Yep, you know? that's our that's our news around here. So we see how we get to like watch on news how this man moves, and it's so funny. Like it's not hostile takeover. He gets there before you even want it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know you want this, but yeah, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna let you know you're gonna want this. Yeah, you show mm. up and then he is waving like, "Hey guys, come on in." Hmm. Man, all right, good for him. So we got some news out of the Pensole camp this year. Two thousand fifteen footwear nudes platform challenge it by Pensole. He went it up. This year's global design competition will focus on medical footwear solutions. So, hmm. a hands-on four-week um, experience going down once again in downtown Portland at the Pencil Footwear Design Academy from June 1st to June 26th. And, of course, as stated, will feature a new category among many others, medical so, all of you aspiring footwear designers, the future dope sneaker makers and dope footwear makers, make sure you head over to pensoul.com. Yeah. This one for them real heads. Yes. Medical shoes. Leave your hype at home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let me see what skills you really got. Exactly. This, this, this is a croc duel. <laughs> <laughs> So, once again, head over to P-E-N-S-O-L-E, pensole.com, for information on how to be a part of the 2015 FN Platform Challenge by Pensole. Shout out to Dwayne Edwards. Um, He was going to try and pop on here tonight. He might still do it, but we'll see if we get him on before the end of the show so that he can share a little bit of that. Um, Next up. Oh, this is going to be really interesting. Oh, man. Do I want to go here so early? Uh-oh. You can go into something else. All right. I'll go into something else because I don't want to go the easy route yet. But I'm pretty sure everyone's going to have a lot to say on that one. Um, <laughs> one of the other things that... Um, he taught me. It's a good story today. Um... I saw this courtesy of Complex, and it is, for those of you who've been to New York, um, let's see here, let's pull this up. I like the way it was done also. Um, All right, let me pull this up in a second here. It's actually an article talking about all of the defunct sneaker stores in New York and Mm. what they are now. So there's an actual situation where you get to see um, what the old store was that was there and what it looks like now. And the way they did it was actually pretty dope. So I'm hoping, yep, okay, here we go. I can pull this up. All right, cool. So the article, again, is called... um, a brief history of New York's defunct sneaker stores. Wow, I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but some good stuff. And shout out to Bren- shout out to Brendan, Brendan Dunn over there at Complex. Um, he's a cool kid. So 
basically how it works is oh clientele. <laughs> It shows you the store. I yeah. went to that store the... in, uh, in SF. One of my first stops. Oh, go ahead, down, on, down on Lafayette. Mm -hmm. So it shows you the store, and then check this cool bit of, of, of stuff out. You get to drag <laughs> and see what it is. <laughs> wow. Crazy. That is cool. Isn't that dope? Yeah. yeah that's dope. Huh. So that's what's known yeah. North Con? Yep. Um, Lion'tel. Lion'tel. Wow. Which is which is for those of you who've been to New York, what store is it across the street from? Clientel is that across from G Star? No. Yes, but 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 next two doors down from G Star. Oh. Two doors down from G Star. What is two doors down? Not me. What what store? Yeah. Supreme. Is it oh, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> so right. remember, you, be, you hit Supreme, then you hit clientele. The whole Ghostface right. reference. Supreme yeah, clientele. Right. You're right. So uh, this is clientele. And this is what clientele is now. Mocha latte, anyone? <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. waiting for donut shop. Yo, I could do that. Oh, okay, I could do this all day. Do that. Wow. Please tell me they got one with... Is classic kicks on there? Yes, they are. Oh, Net, oh that's what man. <laughs> Two I used to work with accounts on the phone at Converse. Jesus. So oh. shout out to Nick Santor, the homie. He just recently he's he's the gentleman who helped me out so graciously, the former owner of Classic Kicks. The, he helped me out so graciously with some of the imaging on the one hundred years of sneakers in three minutes. Mm. So for those of you who do not know the history of the building where Classic Kicks is, it's also the same building where Def That's Jam is. That's right. That's the Def Jam building. Wow, really? So, it was a dorm. It was an NYU dorm. Yep. So this is what clientele, I mean, Classic Kicks was, and this is what it looks like now. What is it? Now, I live in New York, and I had to ask myself, what is that? I was going to say, it looks, like a, it looks like a retro Tommy Polo type What show. is that? Oh, man. Is, is that I have no clue. Man, that used to be my joint. Classic kicks. I still got a classic kicks bag nailed to my wall. So it's now <laughs> called It's now called Venus Clothing Store. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah. yep, that'll never do. No, you can pass. Keep going. <laughs> Next. <laughs> All right. So, not sure how many people remember Rival. Rival. No. Where was that located? Skate shop here in New York. Yep. yep. Down on um, Hudson Street. Hmm. But it is now the Concepts Pop Up Store. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, Concepts wow. Pop Up Store. <laughs> hmm. Yes, it hey, is. that one got reappropriated <laughs> freshly. <laughs> That's yeah. supposed to be a permanent store, right? Yeah, it's open for you know when they put out you know a product and hmm. for various other reasons whenever they see fit, I guess. Sometimes it's open, sometimes it's not. So, but yeah, huh. um, Rival is now the Concepts Pop Up Store. Jeez. All right. So next we have. The store that made uh, a lot of us spend a lot of money for no apparent reason at, at, at the time, but we spent it anyway. The Nike ID Design Studio. Yeah, I was down there. Not wanted to get in that ago. joint so bad. Had all also, also, like, also known as 255. So this is the, the Nike ID Design Studio 255 Elizabeth. And here's what it is now. It's a Kit and Ace, huh? Kit and wow. Ace clothes. You've heard of Kit and Ace? Because I haven't. Kit and Ace is a spinoff of Lululemon. Kit and Ace is the um, son of the founder of Lululemon. It's his son and, uh, and uh, I believe it's his wife. Oh, yeah. Interesting. So it's a spinoff. They're, they're getting started in Vancouver. They're doing stuff in Kashmir as a 
opposed to lycra and spandex. Hmm. And so, so you can yeah, keep that one on the stock watch. If if you have if you have a pair of shoes that were done in two fifty five, cherish them. <laughs> I got I got an invite to two fifty five. Had a friend of mine set it up, and it was the weekend that they that they closed it and moved a lot of their stuff to the uh, the 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 Fifth Avenue store. Yeah, up to Nike Town. Yep. Yep. Hmm. The week they did it, I'm like, oh come on. So yeah, I. This this store is actually the reason for why my name is spelled the way it is. Two fifty five Elizabeth. That's, tell, that's, tell, tell that story. Is it because of what? Well, it was really really quickly. My boy Jaya, who those of you who know him, he's he's hilarious. He's quite the comedian. Also a sneaker lover like us from Brooklyn. He hits me up and tells me that he was going to be able to get me, and this was back when you had to be a VIP celebrity or somebody important to do an Air Force at 255. You guys remember that? Right. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, I'm Air Force, but I'm not VIP. They was <laughs> like, yeah, I can get you an Air Force today. I can get you one. Let's go. So I make my way down there. It's a Friday afternoon, Friday evening. And we get in there, and and this was, I believe, when Vashti was still working there. Oh, I was just going to talk about that. Yeah, okay. Vashti was still working there then, and she was one of the people Jay was cool with. So a whole lot of talk and conversation going on back and forth. Long story short, he comes out, he tells me, yo, they're not going to let you do an Air Force today. I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to walk out of here empty-handed. i got to do something. Let's do a dunk. So, did a dunk. I was already frustrated and not too happy that I'm doing a dunk as opposed to Air Force because anyone who, you know, does ID shoes, you know that those two experiences are not quite the same. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm doing the dunk, get it done, and then now I'm to the point where i got to figure out and actually, Jay is the one who kind of slapped some colors around for me when I was frustrated with where to put the certain colors. And he just slapped them around real quick and said, you want these colors? You like these colors? Click, 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 click. Here you go. Do you like these? I was like, fuck it. Let's go. Hmm. So he steps away. <laughs> so now I'm on the back tab where you get to put your name now. And there's a problem. Nah, Chase was too long. Chase was too long. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Too oh. many characters. So it took me 25 minutes to figure out what arrangement I was going to have for the spelling of Chaser. That's so too funny. I put on these shoes. Wow. That's so C-H-A-S-R is the one that stuck. And that's the one I've been running with ever since. Ever since. Wow. And Elizabeth Street was hot, man, because that was across from Houston just a little way from Classic. Yeah. So 255 man. Elizabeth Street, anyone who's ever wondered why my name is spelled the way it is <laughs> and why I tell you don't put the E in there, 255 Elizabeth Street is the reason why. There you go. <laughs> but it took you 25 minutes to do the bar? <laughs> It took me 25 minutes because I didn't even want to do it. I was like so let down that I couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, man. oh man! I was ready to chuck the whole process, to be honest. But I was like, "Fuck it." You know what? I might never get here again. And I still have this shoe. I'm gonna show the. Um, I'll do a, I'm gonna do a post about it for OSD Live. There That's what I'm going. You should, bro, because the heartbreak of knowing that you had a. You had a golden ticket. I walked up to the gate and saw the roll gate down. That's how I knew. With my illegitimate golden ticket. Man. Remember now, the, uh, was a uh, vacation with Chevy Chase in the Wally World? That's yeah. about exactly yeah. what it is. Uh, my my homegirl girl drove the in. First one there. Up. We was, we was like, let's mom to the store. I got you this invite. We we ended up. Oh, we gonna sit. Now there's there's something else that I have. 
there's something else that I have from 255 that I actually, well, two two pieces that I actually have here from 255 Elizabeth that um, I may never let go of. And one is, um, Qua, do you remember the Air Force ID contest they had that Roscoe won? Yeah. Well, I have the very first of the 500 posters that they did when Roscoe won with all of the finalist Air Forces on that's crazy. Y'all know I was in the I was in the I was the finalist for the uh the dunk one that they did. I have that and I have one of the original, you know, drip color dunk low Nike ID posters from when Nike ID just started. Okay, that's fun. Pay when you get a chance, look at your poster in the lower left corner. The Air Force one? No, that uh of the dunk one. Not the, not, not the, just the one shoe dripping with color to promote ID. Oh, that's the poster. Okay, because they had the uh, when they did the finalists. Uh, mine is in the lower left corner. You better dig that picture up and share some kick stories, <laughs> sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right, so here's another one. Everyone, when you came, this used to be for Jesse and ridiculous. When I took you on the sneaker store. This place would have been at least three stops. Wow. Because training camp back then had three stores all within about ten blocks of each other. Nope. Damn. So this is the last that's what this was one of this is one of the last remaining stores that they're showing right here. It's right across the street from Bryant Park. Um there were a lot of come ups in this store. Oh man. Tons. Was, tons. <laughs> so I actually have to. I actually have to. As I show what it is now, I have to make a correction. I have to. I have to let them know that they need to correct this. So this is training camp on 41st and Sixth Avenue near Bryant Park, and this is what they say it is now, which is a Torno store that's about to be built, but that's actually incorrect. Mm -hmm. It's that this image here of what it is now is actually one block over from what it is. So I have to get that. I have to find that image of what it is. Um, it's actually another store that's open now, but you would get you wouldn't give it a second thought to walk past it because it, it doesn't even relate to shoes or anything. Um, but this is the old training camp. Wow. So this is what it looks like. And they they actually had a concept store in there before where. Um, this first level you see right here was sneakers and gear and everything. And then they had like this training camp shopping club where you had to have a black card and you got to go upstairs to a separate area in training camp and get exclusive shit. <laughs> so it was a great idea, but God only knows why training camp folded the way it did and so quickly. But, I mean, the writing was on the wall because for a while they would have the same inventory of Nike shoes for, like, five years. <laughs> Facts. Like, you go in there, like, there'd be shoes still on the wall from, like, 2007. And very few people remember this, but I, was, I actually owned a pair of shoes from here. Bobito's wow. Footwork. You remember that story, D? I certainly do. Wow. Now, Bob didn't just sell sneakers here. He sold records here, too. Records, yeah. Yeah. I didn't so, realize he had sneakers in there, too. He sold sneakers and records. It's now an empty space. Um, so that's what it looked like back when he was there. And this is what it looks like now. Yeah. Still an empty space on East 9th Street. So, all right, next up. Actually, that's it. That's all it covered that's in this. That's crazy, man. So you got Bobito's Footwork, Training Camp, 255 Elizabeth, Rival, Classic Kicks, Clientele, and Nort Recon. So, man, Nort, Classic so, Kicks, and Clientele used to just be the triangle. triangle. Wow. Hit, hit that real quick. Get over there to uh, grab a little coffee. Man, that used to be like one whole day for me. 
<laughs> that was the fun of it. You had to go to each one, you know what I'm saying? Like, there was nothing better. Like, what are you doing today? Like, what do you mean what I'm doing? I'm sneaker shopping all day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, any, anybody I was... Five-hour affair. <laughs> Yep. Any friends and relatives? Yeah. Oh, I'm out. Don't don't ask me where I'm gonna be. If you need to find me, come search the the, the Lower East Side. Yeah. The, the sneakers the sneaker tour in New York used to take a whole lot more effort and time than it does now. When I bring you guys around, so. No doubt. What is there now? Only thing that's still standing is what Supreme. That's not brand owned. Supreme is the only one still standing. Wow. Yep. So, but what, but what's happening though? I mean, so is it is it just that the big boxes is just cornering everything? Oh no! What happened was these guys shot themselves in the foot. They were so heavy on Nike product and not diversifying. So you had so much shit that nobody wanted anymore, and it just right. sat there and sat there. You know, you know the conglomerate. They want their money every thirty days. Yeah, exactly. And if you don't have your money at the end of thirty days, you're not getting no more new product. <laughs> See, but you know what? That's that's the that's the tough catch twenty two now, and, and from a retail point of view, because Nike owns so much of the the space that yeah. man, it's it's almost tough to even be a retailer. Yeah, yeah it's pretty really tough to be a retailer. Yeah, because they're working against you, and they're selling you the stuff that they're working against you with. Yeah, it's oh man. Yeah, it's tough. You know, Stash tells an interesting story. I can't remember where it is, but I have to find an article where he actually tells, you know, in detail about the, the demise of Nort Recon. And his Nike situation had a lot to do with it. But, you know, he said at the time, it was like, yo, I, I didn't really think that anything could stop me. People were camped out all the time. <laughs> It was a dope shop too. The way that their storage was set up, the glass wall, come sit on a little bench and just kind of stare at the kicks. I mean, like it was a dope. North was a dope little shop. Yeah. So. But but so many of them fell for the trap. It was like you don't have that money at the end of thirty days. All this yep. hot shit's coming out. You're not gonna get it. You're gonna be stuck <laughs> with that old shit. Yeah. So did Nike ultimately close them, or they just didn't pay the bill? Nike decided to open a store down the street from them. <laughs> well, this, this, uh, no. That's even worse. <laughs> 21 Mercer, hi, we don't need you well, no more. That, that's, the, that's the three years ago, four years ago strategy, but these stores have been closed before that was actually happening. These stores actually shot themselves in the foot with not being able to pay their bills anymore. Man. No, Mercer opened while Nort was still there. Nope. Nort I'm, I'm almost certain. Nope, Nort was gone. Because Nort, I, mean, people went away I, need, I need you to away. check on that. So like, what is Nort, the dream? I can tell Nort you went away and then came back and yeah, they went, came away. Back and went away. Yeah, they came back and they did that factory store and they did that yeah. whole thing. But I can tell you how I know because one of the gentlemen who used to work for Nort Recon actually started at 21 Mercer. Hmm. So, and, so why and, is Supreme still standing? <laughs> why do you think? Kool-Aid sells too. <laughs> no, so Supreme is an icon in the skate community. It's man, skaters ain't wearing that shit no more. No, no they they are. They they had one of the best skate videos last year. It it had to be um, full of hipsters then. It was. It kind of is like hipster skateboard type exactly. characters, but they were the first. They are a cornerstone of the East Coast skate community. You know, skateboarding was a West Coast sport, and then Supreme really opened up a lot of people's eyes on the East Coast. Yeah, but Supreme is still standing partly because. They developed their own brand. Their hats and T-shirt yeah. with the red bar and the letters became just because of that iconic nature. It like became you, something that could sustain them. And like you say, it's to tough to be a retailer, but when you're selling your own merchandise, exactly. Yeah, because you can look at a lot of that, a lot of that sect of retail now with your Benny Golds, your Hundreds, your Supremes, where they used to stash other things, and now they sell their own. That's the that's the one way to keep your doors open yeah. when you're not 
moving other units. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what uh, Huff did. Yeah, that's exactly what Huff did. Yep. They actually yeah. just closed their whole shit and just became a brand. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. But but honestly, well, that, I mean, that's, that's the way to go. If you're independent retail, yeah. that's the way to go is to build your brand at mm -hmm. the same time, you know, le leverage leverage the other product that people are coming in to get. Right. To get them in, and then yeah. you also show, you know, your own stuff. Yeah. It ain't no yeah. different than going to the supermarket, man. You get the, you know, the... The, the Fruit Loops that ain't called Fruit Loops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get, the, you, get that, you get them great value corn The Fruit Loops. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fruit yeah. Loops. We've got Fruit Hoops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is McDonald's. And this is McDonald's. You yeah. Know? Hey. Yeah. You get the Greater <laughs> Joe's label or you can get the Heinz label. It don't matter. Right. It's just that's, that's a man who grew up in Inglewood, California. <laughs> hey, that's how they do it. And now you're getting them Fruit Loops. Yeah, Huff, Huff did the same thing because if you look at Huff's first sneaker release, it looked like a Nike blazer. They just filled the gap with their own product and yeah. said, that's cool. If we can't get a Nike account or we can't sustain a Nike account, we'll make a shoe that looks just like it for people who love our brand anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's what's happening. Is that what's going on with, uh, with A-Life? Is A-Life Riverton Club coming back? A-Life is coming back. A life is coming back. Um, oh. Their collaborations that they have coming are, you know, a good way of keeping them alive and in the consciousness of people because they have quite a few coming for the next couple of years. Um, traffic in the store is, you know, it's robust like it used to be. Not quite to where it was when it first started, you know, and you know the heyday years, but um, it's healthy there now. And then it doesn't. It, it helps actually rather that they got some competition over there because extra butter is over that way now too. So, so why do, do they think you, extra butter was in Chicago? Extra butter's in Long Island, and they open one in the Lower East Side now. Oh. Yeah. Shoot, I need to do another sneaker map. I don't even know where half these places at no more. Uh huh. Uh, so I need a new map. Need a new map. Make sure you use a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's clearly you're gonna need to erase. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, true. True indeed. Hey D. Yeah. We 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 spoke about the latest. Pencil saga before you came on. You want to go into that a little bit? Yeah, what happened? <laughs> we spoke about it. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> it is now your time to elaborate a bit. Oh, now, the class. Yeah. Yes, now, that you've thrown, now that you've thrown a monkey wrench in and decided to do medical shoes. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Well, love you it. know what? It was, it's, uh, so now, every if you notice, if you've been following what you have, every year I'm doing more and more, more and more of what I really want to do, um, mm -hmm. and more and more of revealing the the bigger master Doctor Evil plan. Um, and this year is kind of the unfolding of probably half of it, where mm -hmm. <clears throat> doing you know I've, I've always wanted to do stuff to help people, and. Um, just never was able to have an opportunity to do that with, uh, you know, working at the big brands. They they weren't kind of really doing some of those things. Um, what are you going to put that up there? <laughs> Sorry. Wow. I okay. That. I haven't seen that. Sorry. Yeah, that's bad. Oh. That's a bad coincidence. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Wow. Maybe too Aqua, much of a coincidence. Aqua suck. Dwayne is talking, that. ladies and gentlemen. No, nah, you, you can talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm, not talking with, I'm not talking with this up on the screen. <laughs> okay. We're, okay, we're there. We can, we can wheel it back. All right. So... Was the Yeezy Boost inspired by vintage by a vintage Nike by vintage Nike water shoes? So this was courtesy of the shoe game. This came out yesterday, 
And here is the Nike water shoe that um, is detailed here for, wow, it says you can purchase this pair of Nike aqua boots on eBay right now. <laughs> they were made in Taiwan during the period of 1989 and 1992 when Nike was experimenting with aqua gear. Yeah, aqua socks were big. So, so here, here's the actual. So here's the actual shoe, and then we're uh, in great detail here. Great, great detail. And the more and more that you scroll down, the more and more it looks like the the Adidas Yeezy. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Yo, this is not even funny. This is really sad. It does. It really. This is really sad. Do you think maybe he saw this in a book and was like, yo, I want to do this, and Nike was like, get away from me? He was like, all right, I'll go take it to the TS. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, so, so what are we thinking here, gay? I mean, I think it's a little conspiracy theorist, but it's, 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 good. it's good watching like a UFO show. The <laughs> <laughs> hell of a coincidence. Did I mean, he or I mean, did he not? If you look at it, it looks like it's right on. Like, look at the bottom of the sole. Uh, Everything yeah, on it. The spot, zipper's in the uh, same place. The strap is the same. You just change the colors and do the different mold. Damn. Like Fruit Hoops. Oh, gang. Fruit Hoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> them, them, is, them is loop fruits right there. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. This, wow. this is tough. This is tough to watch. I'm going to have to call my boy and find out what happened. This yeah, is that's tough not to watch. Rice that's crispy rice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is kaboom <laughs> cereal. <laughs> this is kaboom. This is. Yep. Uh, this, uh, yeah, this ain't Captain Crush. This is King Vitamin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, King Vitamin, King Vitamin, baby. You know you broke when you know about King Vitamin, you boy. You boy, hell, oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen who are watching, you are getting the education and the hood shit tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are we? Are we all really that speechless? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to argue. We got on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, it's just, what can you say? You literally, I mean, you could say, look at it and say, okay, no, it's just, there's, there's, there's just a likelihood that it happened that way. But come on, like, that's one of those moments where you say, okay, did someone just take a little bit of this and say, I'm going to bring back the Aqua Sock Boost sneaker? You wouldn't have to look at it too much. And Literally, like, what if he got to look through a catalog? And was like, ooh, I could do something with that. And Nike was like, no, you can't. Yeah. And he was like, All right, well. <laughs> Dwayne can probably attest to this as an artist. That you got tear sheets, you got mood boards, and this looks like mm -hmm. somebody tore it out and stuck it in his sketchbook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kinda. Too too many similarities. Yeah. Many similarities. So do we see the date that do we see the date that this particular sample was made on? Ninety one. No. September eighty nine. September eleventh. Eighty nine. Yeah. And I remember like a lot of people actually had, you know, those aqua socks and stuff yep. like that. I remember aqua socks being, were required were vacations if you're going to the islands. They were no, huge. Aqua Socks was like the like the uh, the fly near freeze of the last couple of years. People <laughs> were scooping them up for a minute, and then they made their way to the outlets too. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you were smart, you waited till they hit the outlets and you were able to pick up a pair, scoop up a bunch of them. A bunch and of they them. Were, right? They were actually good in training. Like if you had pool training, you could run. <clears> you, you run in the water. The the bottom of the pool wouldn't tear up your foot. But not on the streets, fellas. Not on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this, this here is the Aqua Boot, the Nike Aqua Boot. 
And let's just go for. Oh, you're gonna do it. You're gonna finding. do it side by side, ain't you? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do the side by side. You don't even need a side by side for this. You just need to pull up the easy. And let's just get this over with by itself. We can do this by itself. That's crazy. It's tough. Yeah, that's crazy. So easy. On easy boost. Pull up, pull up the McDowell's logo. <laughs> McDowell's. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, oh man, they got the Big Mac. Right. They got the Big Mac. Right. Here we go. Let's see yeah, here. Man. Yeah, man. There we go. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Cause it looks like. It. <laughs> oh man. I just think about some of the stuff people were saying about the Yeezys. About you know, I was like, yo, he's a designer. I like, no, he's not. He just slapped a couple of Jordans together. <laughs> You're pick and play, and then you look at this, and it's like he's still not a designer. He's just slapping, just slapping shit together. Oh. Yo. Pape, go to the one that's uh, one, two, three, four, four from the left, where it's actually on someone's foot. Four from the left, where it's actually on someone's foot. Okay. Yeah, at that top row. One, two, three, four from the left on someone's foot. There we go. That one, that one looks like the like the aqua boot. Look at the holes in the top, like the the <sighs> things on the bottom. I mean, it's wow, midfoot strap. And then if you open up that strap, doesn't it have three stripes inside? Side zip. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yes, it does. There's Whoa. no buckle on the side. It's attached to the actual shoe, but that's a small That's thing. bizarro. That's, a, that's bizarro. a minor detail. I know. You know what that's like, Jesse? Jesse, you know what that's like? That's like when Vanilla Ice said, mine goes... Wow. Wow. Vanilla Ice sings the dings. Oh god. This that's what Vanilla Ice would say right now. There's goes dun 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 Mine goes dun 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 and he was just serious when he said that and meant it. Mm, mm, mm. DE, you're yeah, looking it's... mighty intently at this. What are you thinking? Nothing. Nothing. You know, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen this shoe in person to hold it in my hand um, because I, I do, I do like to reserve too much commentary till I can actually hold it in my hand and really. Try to understand what you know what was built, and because um, I, I look for like I look for manufacturing challenges. You know, I like mm -hmm. I look, if there's a if there's a manufacturing challenge, that means someone pushed pushed the pushed the developer to do something a bit different. You know, mm -hmm. a bit out of their comfort zone. Um, mm. So I mean, I, I would prefer to see it in person. But which one, well, the, uh, the the boot or the the aqua boot or you. <laughs> uh, okay, I got you. Thanks. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I yeah. No, I mean it's just it. It I think for me, I, I was expecting when I first saw it because I, I I talked to some of the Adidas guys and they were saying how they didn't went through like a hundred samples and I was just expecting a, a bit more of a degree of difficulty. Mm. <laughs> Mm, okay. Because if you can go through a, a hundred samples, it can't all be style. It can't be a, a complete styling exercise. Um, I, I would hope that you try to push, you know, push the boundaries of, of manufacturing a little bit. And from what I can see, he did a little bit, but I, I gotta, I gotta see it in my hands to mm. really understand it. Mm -hmm. My, my first. Well, I can share one thing. My first impression, I don't, know, I don't know if I got to say it on the show, but my first impression of the shoe was um, it's heavy, you know, 
In and, person? Uh, yes. Have you actually helped and, him already, Kadoma? What's that? Yeah, he was going to help it. Uh, yes. Okay. It is a definitely a luxury, high-fashion shoe, like a Y3. It is... It, when you pick it up, it feels like a Louis Vuitton sneaker. Like it's got some, some of that weight to it. Yeah, I thought it had boots in it. <laughs> yes, but it it is heavy. I I don't know if it's the quality of materials or what it is, but uh, well, yeah, uh, that the upper leather looks looks thick. It looks heavy. A yeah. lot of those uh, materials you see on the upper, you would find in a Y3 shoe. I don't I don't know if you're familiar with Y3, but. That's the thing that that struck me when I when I first. We held it in New York. It actually, at the summit, there was a kid trying to sell them in New York at the summit. Yeah. So, I had a few words with him in regards to what he liked about the shoe, and that kind of posed some challenges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that combo. What did you think about he it could, when you picked it up, paper? Did you pick it up and you touched it and all that good stuff? Yeah, yeah, I actually had a conversation with the kid who was trying to sell them at the summit. And I actually just wanted to get his perspective on what it was about the shoe that he liked that made him spend the 350 plus tax on it. And he was like struggling for words. I said, it's just Kanye, isn't it? He's like, yeah, it's just Kanye. I said, I said how much are you trying to sell these for today? He said, I'll take a 1000 for them. Oh, I said, wow. I said, so there's nothing about this shoe here that you like, like personally, that would make you want to keep this shoe. He goes, <laughs> no. <laughs> He's oh, do you know how many they produced? Uh, nine thousand. So that 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 partially explains the price. Mm hmm. Yeah, I heard I heard twelve thousand, but I think they're I think they're making more, right? They've had like. Two at least two or three drop dates since the original drop date. Yeah, there's some coming out tomorrow. Yeah, there are. In Europe. Yeah, they're dropping in Europe tomorrow. Yeah. Foot Locker Europe gets them tomorrow. I mean, I give them credit for trying to do something different. I mean, um, that was you know when when in Jordan one of the things we wanted to do was to to make people uncomfortable with stuff before you know when you first see it. Because if, if you're uncomfortable, at least that means we tried. Uh, so that, that so that Jordan Roshi that they're putting out doesn't count as trying, does it? <laughs> that was when I was there. I don't know what's going on now. <laughs> Is that what the Dub Zero <laughs> experiment was then? Huh? Was that what the Dub Zero experiment was? No, that was just a pure decoy to 20, dude. That was, yeah. that, that was a pure joke. That Make was, you look left while we go right. That was a $100 million joke to the whole consumer. consumer. Dude, and, and the consumer fell for that joke, hook, line, and sinker. Fell for the okie doke. I'm telling you, that, that, With was, lasers. that whole course of that brand, dude. True. Twenty man. Yeah, that that shoe introduced the idea of remixes. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, it did. And it also gave the dream, uh, that dream chaser aspect of the fours are never coming out. Get these. Oh wait, the fours came out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're never gonna see. Fours are out. Psych, fours are out. Yeah, fours fours came out. <laughs> Oh, they're right over there. You didn't see them? <laughs> <laughs> they're remastered. That's the good leather. That's the good uh, or, leather. Or, or, or for, for idiots, yo, that, sh that shoe got that dub zero bottom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That shoe got the dub zero wow. bottom. Oh, wow. 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 Tell you how much I heard that foolishness. I was wow. just looking at them so then, Roches, Sean. They look kind of whack. Say that again? I was just looking at them Jordan Roches. They don't look very nice. Oh, you think they actually got one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah serious. Mm. Jesse, pull it up on screen for Dwayne to see. But it's got uh, Zoom Air in it. Everything has Zoom Air in it. That's, <laughs> not, that's the selling point. I actually like their new Trunner that's coming out. The new Trunner looks be good as a training shoe, but <clears throat> that's what I've heard everyone say. It looks like a Roshi. Well, this one has Zoom Air in it. <laughs> Screen share <laughs> that, Jesse. I gotta pull it back up. Hold on. Wow. 
taking a minute. Yeah, Dwayne, you, you, you're going you're gonna to look at this one and go, huh? You're going to be like, what the <laughs> hell is that? It's coming out in three okay. colorways. I guess you can, I bet you can guess what the colorways are. <laughs> hey, everybody, everybody's got a Roshi, though. It's true. New uh, Balance, Puma. Yeah. It's that shoe hey, right now. Hey, maybe you got one at Walmart. Look it up. <laughs> what yeah. happened to that uh, Lugs Roshi? The Zosho. The yeah. Zosho, Lugs, baby. The Zosho. Yo, yeah. that's tough. Lugs still know. make shoes? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They they're going to retro, retro the Birdman's, they, too. They, they already did. Show. It's sitting on All the right, bottom shelf. Well, Jesse, well, right Jesse's looking that up, I'm going to go ahead and pull up that Walmart Avia Roshi. Y'all don't even know. Wow. You, you do Everybody that. got a Roshi. That is Roshi. Got to have a Roshi to be in the game. <laughs> hurry up with those retro uh, Birdman. He needs that check right now. <laughs> These are some ugly shoes. I'm looking at them close up. These are some ugly shoes. Let me screen share this joint. Good God! You 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 pull yours up too, ridiculous. Oh yeah, I got you. Check this out. I got a side by side comparison too. Woo! Mm. Hot for the summer. Uh oh. <laughs> Bam! 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 Get your eyes on it. Oh, oh man! Wow! <laughs> Jeez, what is that? Is that the JoJo? What is that? That's it's an like avian. Fire block logo. Oh, uh, that's an Avia? That's, that's Avia, an Avia, baby. It does look like the brand black logo. D, you're right. Hmm. Man. Mm. A little yeah. bit. The yeah. Avia Roshi. Get the eyes on it. Fruit hoops. Fruit in. <laughs> King <laughs> Vitamins. The, the Avia King Vitamins, baby. Wow. <laughs> Selling point. It won't cut the roof of your mouth like the captain. What? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You let yeah, too it looks much. Looks like move. we got a a tweed kind of a tweed or fabric yeah, puffer. Got, or... Yeah, a little fabric, little fat. And, and you know what the crazy thing? Like got a herringbone all, bottom. Too, all 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 BS aside, they feel like Roshi. <laughs> 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 I ain't even gonna lie. You know, you got late late night Walmart run. You look around, see if anybody looking. You slip one on. I'm like, damn, that's a, <laughs> that's a Roshi. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right. Jordan one looks like an aqua sock. So, so yep. Jesse has the Jordan version of the Roshi up. Oh man! There you go, DE. It does look like an aqua sock. It looks like an aqua sock, man. That's exactly wow. what aqua socks used to look like. Wow! Look how fat and nasty the toe of that shoe is. And that is that a uh, is that a um, Nike Hirachi? Middle no, it looks there? like a, it looks like a zoom like a, like the old zoom Telaria. Uh, you got hammer toes? Why the toe like that, though? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, you just described why people didn't wear aqua socks or or what were some of them other ones? They showed it Yo, the, the bumpy two socks. Shoes, yeah, bumpy two, toes, shoes that if, two shoes that if you didn't cut your toenails looked hideous. Yeah. Look at the toe on that thing, yo. Look at and how it turns up. That's like a quack, quack, quack. Like, yo, that is an no. ugly shoe. Nike had, a run, quack, quack. Nike had a run. A couple <laughs> runners. Uh, De, what was the name of some of them runners? Uh, like mid, mid, late, late eighties runners, where they had just that neoprene covering over the toe. The Presto. Well, yeah. No, it, was, it was before, but it was before Presto. The flow, the flow had it. It was like lightweight runners. I'm gonna look them up too. It was, a, it was, there was the one that was a flow. Yeah, the flow. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the race. There was a racer and there was a flow. Yeah, yep, the flow. Because it was all in that Nike International line. I pulled him up too. Yeah. Let's and get some yeah. screen there on these. These, these were the kind of shoes. That's what, that's what, it was always somebody wearing them that didn't cut their big toenail. Yeah, if you had the <laughs> bumpy. The, if you had the bumpy. Uh, uh, look at that. These. Look at that piping. What's with the piping on there? That shit is oh. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> you had the bumpy toe. Those are the that, that, yeah, that's it does, right? The, that's uh, Hirachi upper. That feels like the Hirachi. That's Which one are we talking about here? The Jordan shoe. Here. The Jordan shoe. Oh, the Jordan shoe. Yeah, that's, that's not good. Why yeah. do you wrap the outsole like that? Everybody it's, needs it's a like, Roshi right now, man. It's killing it. And it's got a herringbone bottom. What, I'm supposed to play ball in this? No, that's your off court. That's your off court comfort shoe right there. <laughs> it's got zoom air in it. Get your slide yeah, on. Get that grip. Get that it's grip. It's killing the bottom man. line. See if you look what Steve has on his screen. That flow. That's yep. what I. That's what I believe the Air Max Zero should have looked more like. Mm. You know. I can, see, I can see what you're saying there. 
Yeah, that would have been. This Jordan should be called the Air Cut Your Big Toenail. Yeah. <laughs> the Air Bumpy, the Air Bumpy Toes. What's it actually called? Uh, let's see here. Eclipse. Eclipse. Yeah, you no. need to go hide behind something. Eclipse your toenails. <laughs> Eclipse what is that one on the what is that one on the far right? Is that like a a rendition said, on Eclipse your toenails? Don't <laughs> <laughs> say Eclipse your toenails. Eclipse your toenails. Oh my god! You need to get that out there on the next show. Wow. Clips your toenails. You gotta wow. say. Jordan releases yeah. clips to talk. I mean clips. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, it should actually uh, come with some toenail clippers. Hey, some corn removers. The designers are only doing what they've been told to do. True. Facts, man. True. Yeah. Make a Jordan brand Roshi. Yeah. And, and make yeah, it. This is downright ugly. Movie. I mean, how can you sit in the room and say this looks good? It doesn't. There's no way possible. Oh. There's nothing about that that looks good. I guess it may have fit the business model, though. But it the ain't. bottom line on those Roshis look good. Yeah. Yeah, for real. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. So, yes, that is the Jordan Eclipse. <laughs> there they go. Yeah. No. There they go. Yeah, now that's, that's the original true. shape. This is the original Air airflow. airflow. Yeah. The original. So, what is, the, what is the year on the Airflow? Uh, Airflow is eighty nine, wasn't it? Yeah. No, before 90, that. Ninety one. International oh. line. No, it was the international right. line. I was in high school during that time. One of my teammates on the relay had them. Yeah, this was the retro. My originals were. I want to say they were eighty. I'm thinking eighty seven, eighty, eighty seven, eighty eight. They're early. They're early. Oh, yeah, because yeah. this is two thousand eleven. Was, was this one? So. Zero. The zero should have looked like that with an air bubble in it. Yeah. So yeah, man. Yep. So the flow is not an Air Max, is it? No, the flow no. wasn't a Max. No, no. it's got to be a Max, Kadoma. Tomorrow's Air Max day. Yeah, that's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm saying, I'm saying, if that was '87, the flow should the the zero should look more like that flow than. The Janowski Air Max. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's. Yeah, that that Not Air Max running you know. heritage. I hear you. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Airflow eighty nine. Told you. I'm telling you, running shoes. Yeah. I know my stuff, y'all. Eighty nine. I used to. Study. Did you say that's an international shoe? So that was one of yeah, the Olympic packs. Yep, Nike International. I used to study. The East Bay, knowing which shoe I couldn't afford. All I ate King Vitamin. You heard it. <laughs> knowing which shoe I couldn't afford. Man, you have Damn, a circle. Damn, it got the international on it. It's over at 70. Yep. I can't get that one. I circle like, oh, I'm never going to get that Let's shit. look at the inline Pegasus first. <laughs> yeah. Mom, what if I, I got the dark. grades? No? Okay, fine. Uh, are there Marshalls? No. All right, well. Then. Nope. You're right. <laughs> right. Drop down to Pegasus. It was wow. Yeah. I just found out that this was another design by Bruce Kilgore. Go figure. The airflow? The flow? Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, everything international. God, man, that, that made me feel bad even now. <laughs> and I can afford them now. I still feel like I don't do it. I still feel like I don't deserve them. <laughs> <laughs> but but did you notice like how all the international sneakers, how the insole had the international yeah. logo? Yeah. And that you look for it. Man, like, the the logo, logo was dope. Logo, logo made you feel logo international if you weren't international. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know some global yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I know people lying their asses up. Yeah, man, these are Nike from Europe. They international. You can only wear Nikes if you got a passport. Exactly. Like, yo, I'm, I'm going to be all world someday, dog. That's why I'm wearing these internationals. Uh, these, these, these are the world class joints. Exactly. These ain't you know, track. This is the world you class. You got the purple suit after me. Or you got the magenta suit. That's all the international was is the purple and gold or the magenta and blue. If you ain't got it, it's fake. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you see this coming deep. 
Oh man! All right. So D, we got to wrap up the show with letting D E go into a little bit more of what's coming for the 2015 FN Platform Challenge. Absolutely. Yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do the medical piece this time around. We're gonna we're gonna still have men's and women's um, where the students can do whatever they want. Um, and then, but we what we did also we launched kind of a uh, with different podiatry schools and different organizations we. We're asking the public to give us um, medical foot problems to solve. <clears throat> uh, so we'll hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll get a bunch of bunch of uh, ideas, and we'll pick three of them, and then we'll we'll solve them in the class. We'll physically make the samples, and then give them to the person that that they're designed for. So will so will you guys be designing any shoes for the hammer toes that? Um, Diamond suffers from. <laughs> no, 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 not not this time around. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that's not medical. Uh, that's that's an option. That's an optional uh, thing that she has. That to would be something out. else. <laughs> that's not medical. <laughs> she got hematoes. That's medical. Oh, no, 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 she did that to herself. <laughs> That's a choice. That's yeah. a medical choice. <laughs> I love that it's optional because you you it's do optional. That. Now she can just go to the doctor, pay cash, and get that fixed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know she got cash. Yeah, she straight cash. <laughs> <laughs> straight cash. Straight uh, cash. Homie. We, we got, so I'm looking forward to seeing what people submit, man. What what. What conditions people have, and and what challenges we, we you know we try to get after and solve, um, and then what we're do for this year. Well, all of our classes will produce the product, so everything can be produced um, right after right after this class. Uh, we'll announce. Well, I'll, I'll announce it tonight on you guys' show. Uh, we're doing a we're doing a program with Foot Locker. Uh, mm -hmm. So Foot Locker reached out to us, and they were saying they've been following what we've been doing, and uh, they want us to to partner with them and and, and do a do like one or two classes every year um, as their way of kind of giving back to the next generation of footwear designers. Nice. So that's that's gonna be pretty interesting. Nice, nice. It's about damn time they jumped on board. <laughs> you know what's funny about Foot Locker? Foot Locker and Reebok. Both of them didn't hire me, and I tried to get a job at Foot Locker, <laughs> and just so I can get you know sneakers at a discount, and they wouldn't hire me, and then I end up selling shoes to Foot Locker, and mm -hmm. then now coming full circle, now they paying me to work with them. Ha 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 ha! They don't like that. I'm hot. They all on me. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to give them the, the villain laugh. <laughs> no, it, works, it works out good. They, uh, it's it's cool though. I'm I'm excited to to get after this project with them. Um, and then right after that, we're gonna have a class just for people of color. Um, that's in September. Um, just again, trying to trying to get people, trying to get people an option. Let them know that there's other opportunities out there for them that, besides of what they see on TV. And and hopefully we can get some exposure against that. Um, and then we'll we'll um, we'll have the World Sneaker Championship again, but it'll be online, so it'll be a global comp. Nice. Thirty-two countries, thirty-two designers. We narrow yeah. every week goes down to two, and then the final two come to Portland for two weeks. I can't uh, wait for that. And then we'll crown we'll crown that winner and produce the product. The shoe from last year will go up on. We'll, we'll put that up for sale when we launch this year's comp. Um, nice. We went back in and made some tweaks to it. It's going to look pretty nice, actually. Um, and then we end the, year, mm -hmm. uh, end the year in Denmark. So I'll be back out in Denmark doing a program with them in the end of the year. So this year is, is going to be crazy busy, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to control my destiny a lot, a lot more this year than, than last and, and starting to build programs that <clears throat> become annual, uh, mm -hmm. and then we're we're opening up business programs. So now we're adding a business section this year. So now we'll start having business students come in, um, work with the designers, work with the product team. Um, so we'll start that nice. business section um, with uh, with FN Platform, 
So that's going to be mm -hmm. great. So we expanding that out as well for people who, who don't necessarily have the ability to draw. You can still be creative. Mm. Um, we're challenging you to be creative from a business perspective. Mm. So it's good, dude. We got a lot of good stuff coming, man. A lot of good stuff, dude. That's what's up. Yeah. That's awesome. You don't sit still for long. It's probably the longest you sat still all week so far. I just got here. Shit, I'm in New Orleans now. I just got here today. Um, I'm speaking at this uh, conference tomorrow for uh, it's a it's a national conference for K through 12 art programs throughout the United States. Very cool. Um, so I'm speaking to, uh, nice. speaking to them, and we're going to end up doing some collaborations together for because uh, we're going to launch a high school program next year. Um, so this this organization services about 45,000 uh, teachers throughout the U.S. Um, are you doing another TED Talk this year? No. Nah. No. Nah. Mm -mm. I'll be yeah. there. I, I, <laughs> I, put up, I, I put up last year's, your, your one you did last May once again today. I put it up for uh, folks to see. Um, so I had a question for you, too, in regards to the press release, some info in the press release for um, FM Platform Challenge where it says, um, in particular here, if you can go into a little bit, medical conditions can be submitted as a written idea or a YouTube video through a dedicated email address, 2015fnpc at pencil.com. Um, what, what was the inspiration behind doing that? Um, two parts. One, um, again, sometimes it's difficult to draw. Mm -hmm. So some people may want to take photos of their foot um, mm -hmm. or they want to take a video of their foot and or condition or what they can and cannot do. Um, mm -hmm. So just giving them the, just the option to be able to show us kind of what the mm -hmm. issue is so wow. we can make a judgment instead of just it showing up in text. Mm. Crazy. Huh. That, that was, was the eye-opening piece to me because I'm trying to imagine – what some of these videos would look like that people would submit to you. Um, it reminded me of uh, what was the project that Ja had um, when oh, we did yeah. iPencil. Was yeah. it, did the person have no hands or no feet? I couldn't remember. Yeah, he was he was uh, Eddie Murphy from Trading Places. <laughs> oh, uh, oh. Mm. Yeah, he had no legs, so he was just walking around on his hands. And he basically wrapped tube socks and duct tape on his hands to get wow. around him. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so one of the iPencil projects, <clears throat> um, a young lady named Ja, she had to design shoes for a person with that problem. Yeah. So that was that's, crazy. that's the kind of stuff we want to do. We want to solve these problems for people that can't go buy. They can't go buy product. Um. Mm. So we want to we want to at least try to elevate the idea and at least get them functional. Mm. Um, and depending on depending on the situation, it might be something that could be commercial that could help more people. Um, mm. But we don't we don't know until we get you know until we get the ideas in. Right. Nice. Oh. Okay. So just just to say for argument's sake here, what happens if Diamond does submit her video? <laughs> <laughs> Well, if she's going to submit the full video, uh, <laughs> then I guess I'll be obligated to watch her, her <laughs> to, to properly understand the situation. And if she's selected, might have to go do some market research. Market too. research, exactly. You know, and you'll be taking D with you, this D. Yes. You yeah. know, so. <laughs> I, have to, I have to go watch the, uh, the athlete perform. Exactly, so. on center stage. Exactly. Oh, true. true. Up close. Dear FN, dear FN platform, my name is Tamika, a.k.a. Diamond. I saw <laughs> <laughs> Jam Tunes. Hey, hey, you. you remember <laughs> OK, though, right? Yeah. You remember her product? I don't remember her product. <laughs> oh, dude. She wanted to do the stripper shoes. That was a, 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 a cross between a high heel and an Ugg boot. <laughs> oh yes, oh, wow. that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. 
Really? That's yeah, facts. It's true. Yeah, it's facts. Wow. Yep. So I guess they get yep. over on stage. Uh, so wow. I guess you want to keep their feet warm. <laughs> okay. Wow. Oh man. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, this one is going to be really interesting, man. I can't wait to see this one. So, um, submission formats for actual designers. Um, Mesh one again. Yeah, uh, no, we're doing we're doing both. We're doing Rui, uh, so Rui Inc. And then uh, R O O Y. Yeah, R O O Y I N C E. I mean R I R R O O Y I N C dot com. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, we still we still have that partnership with Mesh as well. Uh, the Mesh competition is is primarily for everyone that's already in Mesh's database. Mm. And all okay. the all the new people will go over to uh, Rui Inc. Mm. Nice, nice, cool. So, can't wait to see this one going down, man. I really can't, especially after all the jokes. <laughs> I'll let you know if I get any videos, uh, any really blurry videos with loud music. <laughs> but, but one thing I want you to talk about really quickly too before we end the show, and um, before we end the show, um. How do you feel about how rapidly the development of 3D printing has come along? Because you were talking about this two years ago, and now it's exploded. Yeah, you know, it's it's gonna every day, dude. Every day is gonna be a new a new thing, dude. The, the real the real job is a chemical engineer right now. Mm. If you if you're studying chemical engineering, because that's the only limitation. The machine prints whatever you tell it to print. Mm. The problem is they haven't developed sure. enough chemicals or you know materials that can print certain things that are wearable or digestible. Um, so mm-hmm. the the real invention is coming in the in the actual materials and the chemicals. <clears throat> the other part mm-hmm. they have to work on is how fast they print. Right. So they mm. it, it won't be a significant. It won't be a significant advantage in the footwear industry until they can speed that thing up. Right now, it just takes too damn long to print. Yeah, and the basic material, like like the e is saying, the basic material that they can get through the machine. So it's <clears throat> uh, it's like uh, I, I can't 3D print with my Kodak because it takes toner. You know. Yeah. It's, it, it, the material you put in is what you get out. So. That you're right about that. When they figure out better materials to put through that machine and allow it to construct something, then it's gonna explode. No, it's it's going. It, we're actually hosting a um, we're as, we're hosting a footwear technology summit at the school at the end of uh, May. So it's it's kind of a big footwear technology forum where there's there's different three D suppliers, chemical engineers, different people that are doing all these things from a footwear point of view in 3D printing gonna come to Portland for two days and we're gonna basically see all the new stuff that's about to happen. Mm, um, and it's, 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 it's coming but it's still a little ways away. If mm. anybody ever watched Star Trek, man, this is like Kirk talking <laughs> to his computer. <laughs> Go get his dinner. He just stick his whole his hand in the hole in the wall and come out with some chicken. Is this a, is this Crazy. the footwear oracle we see here? Is this what's going on? It's come, man. <laughs> <laughs> so figure that out, in the computer. Uh, I would like some dub zeros. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir. Do you mean the shoe with the Jordan's four sole on there? Right, right. right. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, you know. we need Jordan's sole on it at that point. <laughs> uh, it's going to get to that point. <laughs> it, it, it has to, dude. I mean, it, it absolutely has to. Footwear is, it hasn't evolved much. Um, Everything else that we purchase and use has evolved. Hmm. But except footwear? Footwear has not evolved as uh, fast as everything else we have in our lives. That is true. Hmm. Phones, music, computers, everything has evolved. Yeah. Even how you purchase it still is pretty much the same. Hmm. How you make it is still pretty much the same. Socks don't count. They've been making socks for a long time. 
<laughs> that is true. Wow. All right. Well, DE, thank you once again, as always, for popping in during your uh, travels, spreading the pencil gospel around the universe. Appreciate you. Over some gumbo? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> you're not wearing Reebok Classics and Jabot jeans while you're down there. Oh, <laughs> not the Jabots. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. was, I, I did see a few brothers who looked like they were stuck, though. I did. <laughs> <laughs> they were stuck. They were uh, <laughs> well, they good. Were All right. So, D. Wells, we got to wrap up episode number 341. Man. Absolutely. We didn't give this show a name. Well, this one gets named afterwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like after the baby comes out and you find out whose it is, then you can name it. Sure. There's, there's, yeah, there's loop fruits, man. Loop yeah. fruits. Loop fruits. <laughs> no Jimmy. Oh man. <laughs> Super Uggs. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, King, vitamin. Yeah. King vitamin, baby. I'm telling you. Man, so it's been good. It's been fun. Y'all come back, walk with us, talk with us next week for a new, brand new episode. Tell your people every Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Obsessive Sneaker Disorder, The Soul Doctors and Disorderly, coming to you live and direct. So until then, keep your laces tied tightly, your tongue loose, and walk good. Y'all be safe, as we say. What do we do? It's time to roll out. All right. Hit the music.